Time is a classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. for you at more than 325 hotels around the world. Book today at Doubletree.com. Doubletree by Hilton, where the little things mean everything. When it comes to collegiate athletics associations, how do you know which is the best fit for your institution? It comes down to priorities. If your school wants to be nationally competitive at a reasonable price while driving enrollment and supporting the school's bottom line, the NAIA is the best association for you. How do NAIA schools do it? NAIA schools measure success not just by game scores, but by their financial bottom lines. Their NCAA counterparts spend an average of 60% more on athletics. For the schools at the top of the Director's Cup rankings, the cost goes up to twice as much as an NAIA school. Regardless of their size, all schools are in competition for students. Student-athlete participation at NAIA schools has increased an average of 40% in the last five years. That's good for the student-athletes and provides vital support and financial stability to our member institutions. Moving from Division III to NEI has given our athletics department a boost in recruitment and it's been a definite step up in competition for our student athletes. We know the NAIA isn't the right place for every school, but for those schools wanting to offer quality, competitive athletics without the high price tag, the NAIA is the right fit. Take a closer look. You won't be disappointed. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. The belly full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404 698 3992 or log on to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M A N G O S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the final basketball game of semifinal Saturday here on the campus of Edward Waters College. This is the second new semifinal game between the number one seed in the tournament in the conference, the Tougaloo Bulldogs from out of Jackson, Mississippi, and the Xavier Gold Rush, the number four seed from out of New Orleans. Ryan Fulford joined by Ron Mitchell here, and Ron, needless to say, many people did not expect this Tugelo team to be where they are. Preseason ranked number six in the conference, but here they are after a 25-4 regular season, 12-2 record in the conference. One of the top scoring teams in the GCAC, averaging 92.32, nearly 10 points better than the second most scoring team. And it's interesting, they are going up against the number one scoring defense 
in the league in Xavier, who's allowed a league high, or a league low, I guess I should say, 70 points per game. Well, that's always good for a good matchup. I mean, anytime you're 10 points ahead of the field offensively, you hope that offensive transition team still travels. You know, defensively, you know, how can our counterparts uh, match up against them? You know, what kind of wrinkles are they going to throw at, you know, at the offense? Because I think a lot of times in this, in this tournament play, you need to throw a different variety of defenses at a good offensive team and see if you can stagger them a little bit. Because all you need is that one W to advance to the next round. So I'm a firm believer, hey, in a matchup like this, both teams are on the road. There's no favorite here. So there's no home field advantage, home court advantage either way. So it's about which team is going to put, the, put up a better showing. These two teams played twice during the regular season back on January. Both games were back in January, so it's been a long time since these two teams have seen each other. Back on January 7th, Tugelo won on their home court, 96-84. More at the pace of Tugelo and what they wanted. Well, the second time, and that game was at Tugelo, correction, the first game was at Xavier. But on uh, two weeks later, on January 21st, it was a 67-64 to ball game. So, three-point ball game, a game in the high 60s, mid-60s, I would bet that is what head coach Alfred Williams wants in this game. And Tugelo will definitely want to play up-tempo and look for something in the 80s to 90s. So, whichever team is most successful in their style of play will probably be the team that has the best chance of winning. Right, I think, you know, if every team is contesting and contending every offensive possession, I think we might not reach the main point mark in this game because good defense will hold the shot clock down to a minimum before the offense really will put up a shot because you're not going to be in a big transition game if the defensive sit here and they prevent a lot of lanes of uh, a lot of driving to the basket a lot of slashes if they can cut a lot of that off i think we'll have a great defensive game going both ways let's set the starting lineup for xavier in gold white letters and numbers trimmed in black guard number three rayshawn mart 6'3", sophomore from Huma, Louisiana, was a second team all GCAC selection. Number 11, guard Jeff Dixon, 6'2", senior from out of New Orleans. Number 14, guard forward, Damani Flanagan, a 6'4", junior from Panama City Beach, Florida. Number 21, a guard, Anthony King, a 5'10", sophomore from Donaldsville, Georgia. And number 24, forward, William Lloyd. 6'5", senior from Baton Rouge. He was the second team all GCAC conference. For Tugelo, their starting lineup in white, red letters and numbers, trimmed in blue. Number five, Tonzel Handy, the conference player of the year. 6'5", senior from Jackson, Mississippi. Number 10, Sean Atwater, a six-foot junior from Atlanta. Number 13, Darius Griffin, a 6'1", senior from Nanchez, Mississippi. Number 15, Corey Davis, 6'5", senior from Vicksburg. And number 23, Sabron Carter, 6'5", from Canton, Mississippi, freshman. And there's Atwater with the ball over to Davis. Atwater at the top of the key there. Xavier picking up man-to-man. -man. And I would imagine Xavier wants to defend and make Tugelo use every possession. And there's the first turnover forced by Xavier's defense. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. You know, you can get your defense to, you know, let it be known that they're here to play a good ball game. They're going to fo force those, those turnovers. Lloyd at the elbow. Looking, picks up a screen, goes right towards the basket. Gets stopped, pulls up. No good. Rebound Carter. Up ahead to Griffin. Swing it down, low block, trying to force his way to the basket. Wow, they're going to call 
Damani Flanagan with that. Even though it looked like he had position, his arms ended up coming down. Surprised to see with as much jostling as Carter had going, trying to get to the basket, that the officials gave that to him. Yeah, I'm going to say Flanagan looked like he had great position. You know, he stayed vertical, and uh, the ref saw it a little different. I think, well, the... It was a lot of force contact, uh, exactly. offensive player. You know, he did a step and under and lowered his shoulder. Carter is at the line. He misses both free throws. Rebound by Flanagan. Ball in the hands of Jeff Dixon there at the point. Still scoreless in the first minute of this contest. That's Lloyd. They run action off of him at the top of the key. Dixon again over in the corner to Mark. He gives it to Lloyd. Lloyd pulls up at the free throw line, knocks it down. And Xavier starts the ball game with the lead. Lloyd is a strong contender down low at the paint. Has a sweet touch. Atwater setting the defense, or setting the offense up, being guarded tightly. Down low is Handy. Turns one way, spins back to his left, and they're going to say that time it's over the back on Carter. Nice box out down there by Flanagan. Flanagan's box out there. Forced that over the bat. Jeff Dixon to Lloyd at the top. At the top of the key. Finds Dixon for three. Count it. Off the pass from Lloyd, and Xavier has a 5-0 lead. Darius Griffin brings the ball up. Atwater swings it over. Griffin looking, gives it down to Handy, gives it back to Griffin. He pulls up for three, count it. Darius Griffin, first points of the game for Tugelo. He had Flanagan right in his face. Dixon uses the screen. That's Mark. Dixon pulls up. Yep. They're going to call that on Griffin as he did not allow Dixon to land after he took that shot. So I believe that'll give him three. Yes. They're going to say that was fouled shooting a three-pointer. So now Jeff Dixon will go to the line. First one is good. Dixon is definitely an offensive threat. You know, anytime he gets the ball, he's looking to score. Dixon makes the first two, a 71.8% free throw shooter on the season. And he has an opportunity. He knocks down all three. 17-20 in the first half. 8-3 lead for Xavier. They come back in a 2-2-1. Slowly moving back. Back into their 2-3. Let's see if they get out of that. Nope, that three-point shot. Rebound by Handy. Goes to the basket. Unable to finish that. Mark, double team. They get it out of the pack. Up ahead on the right side. Swings it just a little too high. That one was on Anthony King. Tried to skip past that into the corner. Intended for Jeff Dixon. That was a little more than a skip pass. That was into the third row. It should be noted, Tomzell Handy, not only the leading scorer in this conference, one of the leading rebounders in Division I NAIA in this conference, averaging about 12, a little over, almost 13 rebounds a game. And just under 20 points. That three point so off the glass. Corey Davis knocks that down. Cuts the deficit to two. It's Dixon using the screen. Ball in the hands of Flanagan. Looking down low. Nope. Gives it over to Dixon. And he knocks down a three. Jeff Dixon with nine of Xavier's 11 points in the first quarter. You know, Tonzel Handy 
is definitely one of the players that accumulated a lot of accolades. He's guarding Flanagan on some of these possessions. 11 to 6 is our score. There's Handy, baseline. Gives it over to Davis. Davis looks like there's some offensive. Yes, yep. That was a push. Extended the elbow. Trying to create a little separation. And right now, I'd say the first four minutes of this contest is at the pace that Xavier wants with their pressure defensively. There's Lloyd at the top of the key, being guarded by Carter. Gives it over to King. King, three point, bounces around the rim, no good. Who had that follow there? Was that Flanagan? Flanagan, Flanagan with yes. the follow. Seven point lead for Xavier. The shot went up with a nice little bounce. It was missed time by Tugalu. Flanagan had a, a nice little easy tap in. Moving the ball around the horn. That's Atwater looking down low. There's Carter. Woo! And Carter is met above the rim by William Lloyd. My goodness. Just the force of that block created the foul. It doesn't even sound right to say that, but it's... Lloyd looks like a, a, a linebacker, but he can jump. That was a great defensive play. I think like three people look like they jumped above the rim on that. Sabron Carter, he tried to go up, but uh, now he has to go to the free throw line to earn those points. Nice left-handed stroke. A couple of substitutions on both sides for Tugelo. Stanley Williams, number one, comes into the ball game for Xavier. Number zero, Donovan Armstrong, and number 32, Galen Smith. Last substitution for Tugelo, number 25, Datavian Porter. He comes in for Sabron Carter, who was at the free throw line. Carter's kind of holding his arm after that. He hit the floor kind of hard. Yeah. But he had some nice strokes at the free throw line. That's Mark. Dribbles into the lane, gives it over to Dixon. He pulls up. I told you, he's all about scoring. Jeff Dixon, whatever he had for lunch or dinner, man, it was good because he is playing at a high level with 11 of Xavier's 15 points in the first six minutes of this ball game. 15-8 lead for Xavier. Williams called for a charge, and that's Donovan Armstrong. Stanley Williams picks up his first. Four team fouls already in the contest for Tugelo. Jeff Dixon gives it over to Galen Smith. And they're going to say that Lloyd hooked his defender, Donovan Porter. And that might be Lloyd's second. Hold on, Brent, in the Gold Rush offensive foul. Number 24, William Lloyd. Trying to explain to the officials or get some clarification. Either way, it's his second. Into the ball game. Damani Flanagan checks in for him. He was demanding a little space underneath. Just a little too much. Yes. Stanley Williams, a six-foot guard for Belzani, Mississippi. Quick movement of the ball there by Tugelo. That three-point attempt by Davis was no good. Up the floor comes Mark for Xavier. Or excuse me, that's Flanagan. Traveling violation. Dillard Hall. In college, that's a travel. Called him for it. At the pro level, might have got away with it. 14-03 left. Skip pass over into the corner. Three-point shot short. On the low block is Porter. Goes up. It's blocked. Blocked by Mark, but I think on the second attempt, Mark did commit the foul. The first one he got. Second one, he got the arm. The NXT foul on number three, Rajon Mark, is the first person on fourth team foul. His first, team's fourth. Shooting at the line, Dontavian Porter. Dontavian Porter at the line. 6'5", sophomore. 
from Jackson, Mississippi. He's a 64% free throw shooter on the season. And that first ball, just a little to the right of the rim. Second attempt. Not a good free throw shooting start by the Bulldogs. That one, his aim is on perfect. 15 to 9, Xavier leading by six with 13.43. Ball in the hands of Anthony King, looks to drive. And he is gonna be fouled, could be one of two guys. Actually, they do call that on Dontavian Porter. It was either gonna be Porter or Corey Davis. His first personal 15 foul. Anthony King shooting two. And Ron, we had the game where Xavier played in the quarterfinals and Anthony King is not shy about going to the basket at all. No, he's not. Makes the first free throw. Puts the lead up to seven again. Second free throw attempt is good. 17 to nine lead for Xavier. Corey Davis, they swing that ball around quickly. Handy doubled up down on the short corner. Three-point attempt, no good. Rebound by Galen Smith. Not too many second-chance opportunities no. coming Tugelow's way. Dixon calls for that screen, gives it over to Flanagan. Into the corner, King pulls up. No good. Williams goes up high to get that rebound. He pushes it up the floor. There's Davis into the corner. Inside handoff, no good. Handy comes up with it, kicks it over to Williams now. Corey Davis back to Williams again. Being guarded tightly. Playing a little back and forth inside. Nice drop step and pivot by Dontavian Porter. Notice the, the quick movement of the ball. That's what Tugalu wants to do. Created, create an advantage through the quick ball movement. Find the open guy. There's a three-point shot attempt by Smith. No good. Here comes Tugelo again. Williams leading the break. Behind him to Davis. Davis in the corner to Handy. He's going to the basket. And good, ver uh, good job by Flanagan to go vertical on that, even though Handy did bump into him and fall down. No call. Dribble handoff. Nice crossover. Quick move. There's jump shot. Nice job by Anthony King. Oh, uh, they're moving the ball. This they, is like a little mini motion offense just on one side. Davis Williams, three-point attempt. Three-point attempt Ladarius Woods. Ladarius Woods, the junior from Tunica, Mississippi, knocks that down. Cuts the deficit to five. I have a feeling you could probably count on a on one hand the number of times Tugalu has trailed for this long a period early in a ball game. Dixon in the corner for three. Jeff Dixon stays hot. 14 points. He has as many points as Tugalo in this first half. Bulldogs moving the ball into the lane is Williams. He has it taken away from him. Armstrong gets to the basket and scores. Give credit to Anthony King on the other end for the steal or forcing the turnover. It's a 10-point lead for Xavier. Woods unable to get that ball inside, and he's going to commit the foul, smart foul, to slow him down. Yeah, we're he just have, wanted to slow down the break. We're going to have a host of bleeding right now. We're going to have a host of substitutions here, but more importantly, we're going to have a timeout with 10:40 remaining in the first half. Xavier, 24 to 14 lead. We'll be back right after these words.
The citrus sizzle is built on a strong foundation of onions, celery, and peppers layered with just the right amount of citrus. Citrus sizzle is not too peppery and it's not too tart. It's a balanced symphony of lemon pepper flavors that are guaranteed to delight. This is Shay Bynes, founder of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur and executive producer of the film Trustfall. I believe in the power of a story to transform lives. That is why I decided to make the film Trustfall. It's a story that I believe will touch the hearts of entrepreneurs around the globe who truly desire to start and grow their businesses by partnering with the presence of an awesome and limitless God. At my core, I'm a passionate storyteller, so I was like a kid in a candy store making this film. Not only did I have the opportunity to be the producer, Back to action here at Adams Jenkins Center on the campus of Edward Waters College. The number five seed, Xavier Gold Rush. You know, what's interesting, Tonzil has yet to get it into the floor of the offense. Tonzil Handy. Tonzil, yeah. yes. Leading scorer in the conference with uh, just under 20 per game. Tugelo comes out in a zone here. Three pointer in the corner by Martin. No good. Save attempt by Griffin. Actually gives the ball back to Xavier. Not sure he should have saved that ball. Quick pass back and forth. Down low is Smith. Not that amount. They're going to say it's off of him. And just a quick notation here Xavier comes in with Jawara Hall. So two bigs on the floor for Xavier. Andy goes up, makes no difference to him. He scores that one off the glass. 24 to 16, eight point lead for Xavier, 9.50. Three point attempt by Ed Carter. Count the buckets. Xavier lead up to 11, largest of the game. Nice ball work, and stolen by Mark. Pushing the ball into the corner is Dixon. Three ball, no good. Plenty of hands go up. Handy comes down with the rebound. Williams on the other way, going down through the lane. Count it. Stanley Williams with a nice finish. And I'm sure that's the pace that Tougaloo wants. Especially off of a miss. Ball in the hands of Jeff Dixon. Mark thought about it, gives it to Carter, he decides to shoot the three, no good, Smith finds Mark, and a block. Yeah, he was slicing through the lane, and he had his legs cut out from underneath him. Yeah, I thought that was a, a good call. The Michael Stribling is called for that. I thought he was leaning, I thought he was leaning just a little bit as Mart was cutting to the basket. Yeah. He actually went in and changed direction to get a better angle on the side of the rim. Rayshon Mart, second team all-conference. Unfortunately for him, he's a 62% free throw shooter. As much as he gets to the basket, he's only a sophomore, so he definitely has some years ahead of him to work and improve on that. But as much as he gets to the basket, you want to see that young man shooting in the 70s. And let's see, we got the officials. I think they're gonna they're gonna ask Candy to come off the floor. It may be some blood on his jersey. As he handy in the corner takes his jersey off as he goes to the trainer. A little peroxide always uh, take it out. That's the uh, old school travel club. Travel club book for all team moms out there. That's right, a little or, peroxide. A little peroxide to knock out any blood on the jersey. Mark makes that second free throw, and Xavier's lead is 10 again. 8.50 to play in the middle of the lane. Nice jump shot there by Stribling. 6'6 six, six junior from out of Jackson, Mississippi. Ed Carter brings the ball up using the screen, gives it over to Flanagan. He decides to go to the bucket. 
Mark tries to recover. They're going to say there's a kick ball there. Hey, whenever you get a chance to put your foot on the ball on a loose scrum, go ahead. Doesn't hurt. Just hope you don't kick anybody because that will stop the ball. And they're gonna they're gonna want all those bodies. I'm surprised they didn't bring the towel out, but they will. The official says they are good. We are good to play. 28 to 20, 827 left. Xavier with an eight-point lead. Rayshawn Mart with the ball. Finds Ed Carter. Carter pulls up. He's inside the arc. Misses that, but it's recovered by Damani Flan again. Has the ball stripped and knocked out of his hand by DeMichael Stribling. Back of the ball from the line. Stribling with that long reach and managed to, managed to avoid any kind of contact. Back in the ball game for Tugelo. Number five, Tomzell Handy, after getting his jersey attended to. Point attempt by Stribling. No. I'm a little surprised they didn't go a little high-low action. I thought Stribling could have turned around and he had Handy on the baseline. Yeah, they're not include him in the on the low block is slant again. Oh, oh, and he might he might have picked up a foul. He did. Wow. I, I got was, him off his feet. Yeah, I was oh, a little surprised he turned Tomzell into that. Handy, they called that on Tomzell Handy. Actually, I thought he had it on the first step. But instead, he went with the pump fake, got handy up in the air, and then went up. Smart decision there to draw the foul. Put the other teams, anytime you can pick up fouls on the other team's best player, good for you. At the line. Damani Flanagan knocks that down. On the season, he's a 66 percent free throw shooter second free throw attempt no good 29 to 20 lead for Xavier Stanley Williams trying to get around that screen finds Davis gives it back to Williams Williams being guarded tightly, maybe a little too tight, by Anthony King. And I believe that's who the official is going to call on that. Anytime you have a name well, by the first uh, name, Anthony, that's a step or two from likeness of Anthony Hardaway. All right, I'll give you that one. Yes. Okay. I was looking to see where the young man was from to see. But I'm not really sure. Oh, and they're going to call an offensive foul. Damani Flanagan takes that. I believe that might be the second charge that Flanagan has taken. He's a real savvy basketball player. He knows, you know, being a good defensive player is all about trying to draw a charge. Well, Flanagan is one of those players for Xavier that has only played in about 17 games this season has really been a great addition for this team since uh, hitting the core in January. Mark, pull up, jump shot, no good. There's playing again. Wow, what a rebound, but it's stripped away from him by number 22, Darius Kennedy. He has the ball knocked out of his hands. Back comes Xavier. Mark to the basket. He's fouled from behind by Corey Davis. He had a quarter step going to the basket. Foul number 15, Corey Davis, his second personal attempt. Corey foul. Davis picks up his second. Rayshon Mart shooting two. Rayshon Mart at the free throw line. He made sure Davis had to go through his body to try to get that block. Mart is one for two today. And Knocks two, his second free throw 10, down. Into the ball game for Xavier. Well, not yet. It looks like Donovan Armstrong is prepared to come in for Rayshon Mart, assuming he makes this free throw right here. 
Look at the size on the floor for Xavier. Very small compared to, well, I, correction. As soon as I say that, they bring in Galen Smith. Just as I was about to say, they're going a little small. Now they go into a 2-2-1, Xavier does, with an 11-point lead on Tugelo. And they're going to call Flanagan for grabbing the shorts, it looks like. And that's going to be his second team foul. Team six. Be interesting to see if they leave him on the floor, and they do. Xavier picks up man-to-man, -man. ball in the hands of Atwater, down low. Scribbling. No good. Back comes Xavier. Ball in the hands of Anthony King. Hand off to Armstrong. Over to Flynn again. Nice jab step. Gives the ball back to Carter. He picks up a screen. They run a little weave action around the horn. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Got to get something happening right now. Carter, shake and bake. Nope, they're going to the basket. One second, they did not get that off. Got him an arm shot. He doubled. Got him on a double. Actually, give some credit to Tugelo because I think it was a good closeout on Armstrong on the baseline that sort of forced him to maybe double on that. And he made the basket right before the shot clock actually went off. Six minutes remaining in the first half. Xavier with a 31-20 lead over Tugelo, the number one seed in our tournament. Knifing through the lane off the backboard is Corey Davis. Corey Davis, one of the team's leading scorers, averaging 14 points a game. He has five. Nice move through the lane yes. by Donovan Armstrong. Nice answer there. Xavier with an answer every time Tugelo gets a bucket. Scribbling on the low block. And they're going to say that Jeff Dixon had his hands on the back where he grabbed his hips. He was giving up a couple of inches. Oh, definitely there was a size matchup down there. You can never let yourself get behind the offensive guy at that height. Rayshon Mark checked into the ball game. And also now William Lloyd checks in. He's going in for Galen Smith. Lloyd has two personal fouls, but this is getting uh, Lloyd in, obviously, for an offensive possession on the other end, I'm sure. Stribling shoots the first of the one and one. To Michael Stribling. Knocks the second one down. Up. Let's see, we've got a... Ah, uh, the uh, shot clock did not get started on time. Thirty-three to twenty-four is our score. Xavier with a lead. Five twenty-two remaining in the first half. William Lloyd, there's a handoff to Jeff Dixon. Ah, offensive foul, and it didn't go good. Offensive foul, number twenty-one, Anthony. They called that on Anthony Dixon or Anthony King. Excuse me, number twenty-one. His second team eight. Down low to Stribling. Stribling kind of fell down, but managed to regain his balance and hit a nice shot. Stribling using his size very well here in this first half. There's Dixon. Lloyd's got to be careful down there on that low block. He has two. Don't want to pick up a third. There's King. Doesn't use the screen quite well, but there's Galen down low. There's Lloyd. Pump fake. Goes up. Gets Stribling off his feet. Goes up, and that'll give him an opportunity to get to the free throw line to get an easy two. The foul on number three to Michael Stribling, his second personal. That was a nice head fake. And was able to get Stribling his ball second ball foul. So that's a key foul there. I tell you, I, you know, I've got to give credit to 
Xavier, actually both teams, the basketball IQ, especially by Xavier, really high as they've managed to use the ball fakes and the pump fakes quite effectively in the first half. That free throw attempt by William Lloyd is good. Number 32, Gaylord Smith. Lloyd has a nice stroke like a guard shooting his free throws, but has some shoulders that can take a lot of punishment. Looks like there'll be a sub for him if he makes this free throw right here. He does. Gets him off the floor. I guess that's a smart move to keep him out of foul trouble. Jawara Hall comes into the ball game for Xavier. And they're in that 2-2-1 again. Ball up the floor. They're stribbling. Oh, they're going to say he traveled. He tried to go for the Euro step, but he's called yeah, for traveling gotta instead. Got to have a passport. If you're going to really try to do that in college basketball, it's not going to work. That must be that Eastern European step. Xavier with the ball. Rayshon Mark off the screen. Armstrong strong into the lane, and he's called for a charge. Yes. Stribbling managed to stand in there Zero and hold his ground. Hey, that, I'll tell you what, that took guts by Stribbling to be able to take that charge with two fouls. Coach Billups, Thomas Billups in his fifth season with a little message to Stribbling. Probably something to do with something that happened on the offensive end. Handy with the ball, goes to the basket. It's partially blocked. I couldn't tell if it was Smith or Hall that blocked that. We'll go back and see who gets credit for that. Mart is denied. A little high-low action, and that ball goes off the foot of Porter. Real interesting seeing two bigs play. A little two-man game at that level. We're going to take a break with 3.46 left in the first half. Xavier leading 35-26. to 26. We'll be back right after these words. Fun of directing, but I was also the one who was able to tell my own testimony of the goodness of God in my life. My prayer is that this film ignites greater faith and stirs up a deeper hunger of experiencing more of God in your life and business. Because with God, there is always more. classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758. Back to live action. Xavier inbounding the ball underneath with 346 remaining. Jeff Dixon over to Ed Carter, over to Rayshon Mark. Carter gives it to the big fella. He decides to give it over to Dixon. Three seconds, two seconds on the clock. Jeff Dixon for three. No good, but off the miss. Hall unable to finish that. The tip. Oh, he man. Put it down on the ground. He should have just flushed that back. And the shot clock did not get going off the ball advance. So correct, he's 6'11". I thought he was going to dunk it, but yes. he, he went up and got it off the tip. I, I thought that was going to be a nice, easy finish. Jawara Hall, 6'11", junior from Oslo, Norway. Right. I still don't know if I'm saying Jawara Hall or Jawara correctly. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> you have no choice, I guess. <laughs> the senior fan on number three, Rejon Mark 
Rayshon Mart is called for a foul. His third, and that's going to send Catavian Porter to the free throw line to shoot two. First attempt is good. Second attempt by Porter, no good. Rebound by Galen Smith. Gives it over to Jeff Dixon. He brings it up. He'll get a quick screen from Hall. They go inside. Smith, Smith tried to throw that ball down to Hall, just a little outside of his reach. And Smith comes out of the ball game, and Damani Flanagan checks back in. 35 to 27 lead for Xavier. 2:45 remaining in the first half. Down low to Handy. Jabs decides to go to the bucket, spin into the lane over his shoulder, put a little spin on it, unable to, and he came down. He, he's still on the ground yes. holding himself. Handy is hurt. We've got a basket and we've got a down player. Oh man, that may be serious. I'm looking at the wrist and the hand yes. of Handy. That does not look good. We're going to take a break in the action while we can. 2.26 remaining. Our score, Xavier 37, Tugelo 27. We'll be back right after these words. Eight one. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. for you at more than 325 hotels around the world. Book today at Doubletree.com. Doubletree by Hilton, where the little things mean everything. When it comes to collegiate athletics associations, how do you know which is the best fit for your institution? It comes down to priorities. If your school wants to be nationally competitive at a reasonable price while driving enrollment and supporting the school's bottom line, the NAIA is the best association for you. How do NAIA schools do it? NAIA schools measure success not just by game scores, but by their financial bottom line. Back to live action here as Tomzell and Andy comes off. Looks like he is not quite sure how injured he is, but we will see based on how he comes in. And before we get started, let me thank those who are watching, those Tougaloo fans, who uh, thank you for helping me with the pronunciation. Tougaloo. Three-point attempt. Loose ball. That's going to go off of Jawara Hall. I understand the frustration, folks. Trust me, as a fam you rattler, often uh, hearing people call it fam boo, not a fan of that. So I will do better. Tougaloo, Bulldogs, trailing right now 27 to 37. 211 left in the first half. Swing the ball around the corner. That's Davis. Three-point attempt. No good. Out Knocked out of bounds by Stribling. And for the bold rush, number 24, The Bulldogs are going to pick up here. It looks like in a 2-2-1. Back into the ball game for Xavier. William Lloyd. Stolen, almost stolen away on the hit pass with Darius Woods. 
Any time you try to and actually that's cross gonna court go, fast. Yeah, that's going to go actually to Tugulu. They're going to say it actually was deflected off of a Xavier player. So, yeah, that ends up going to the Bulldogs. Woods driving baseline. Pull up jump shot. Bounces around. No good. Rebound. Loy comes up with it. Up the floor is Fleming through the lane. That's going to be a charge. Corey Davis takes that one. You got to see. I mean, Davis. Davis was there as Davis was there as Fleming was even touching the lane. I, you got to be able to pull up and see that that was going to be a charge. That was an easy call. As we're, as we take a quick peek over over on the bench, we can see the athletic training staff giving attention to Handy's left wrist, or at least the hand wrist area. Yeah, he's shaking his leg. He's in a lot of pain still. Skip pass into the corner. Quick ball movement by the Bulldogs. That three-point attempt. Bodies hit the floor. They're going to call. Might be Smith. Kind of clearing out. Yep. Stribbling ends up hitting the deck. The foul number 32, Inland Smith, is first throw score. Michael Stribbling, shooting two. Michael Stribbling at the line. Stribbling, perfect so far. Three for three in the game. Four substitutions on both sides. Looks like there'll be a sub for Stribbling if he knocks this down. 116 remaining in the first half. That one is good. Also back for the Bulldogs, number 23, Sabron Carter. Stribbling comes off after a perfect free throw shooting day. Bulldogs in the 2-2-1. Two -two Xavier working it from side to side. There's the, there's the trap as soon as it comes off. There's Davis with the steal. And fouled. Nice job by Sean Atwater to recognize that you got two Xavier uh, players coming at you. All he really had to do was just hold his ground. And he'll go to the line with an opportunity to get two free points. As we look over to the sideline here, visibly frustrated, disappointed Tanzel Handy. That first free throw was good. So I'm watching one of the trainers that went over to help out. He's having a problem with the thumb. And obviously with this being college athletics, you know, information is very, uh, very sparse. So we're, we're only speculating from this angle, folks. Count the basket. It's a six-point lead for Xavier. Cutting into that double-digit deficit. Here comes the trap as they come across half court. Carter over to Smith. Skip pass to Mart. Dixon goes baseline. Back into the corner. There's a turnover. Oh, what are they going to call? They get, I think they hit the back of the backboard. But let's see what they call. Dixon was in a bad place to receive a pass. Standing underneath the basket. Okay, they say that ball went off the backboard as it was touched by Tugaloo. Oh, Mark up top. Off the lob. Rayshon Mark. Putting his athleticism on display. He went upstairs for that one. Anytime the defense is standing that close underneath the basket. If you're not boxing out, that can happen. The Michael Stribling check back in for Tugaloo. That free throw attempt by Martin, no good. 33 seconds left. Stanley Williams comes across the half court line. Into the corner. 
back to Davis. Woods. Woods on the wing, uses the screen. Nearly stolen, it is stolen. And a finish by Rayshon Marks. Seven seconds, six seconds. Williams into the lane, pushes his way towards the basket, and he picks up a foul call as he hits the deck. If he would, if he would have kept his hands up, he probably wouldn't have got that defensive uh, foul call on him. It's Damian Williams shooting two, a 77% free throw shooter on the season. Williams was very aggressive going to the hole. Makes the first one. And for the rush, number four, the little boy. They'll need more input from him. With Handy out of the game, somebody else is going to have to pick up the slack and take those extra shots that are sitting on the table. Second free throw is good. Khalil McCoy had checked in for Xavier and now checking in for the Bulldogs. Number 10, Sean Atwater, as he gets Williams off the floor. Two seconds. Quickly, here comes Mark. Pull up three. Off the glass. No good. And so that's going to be the end of the first half. Our score, Xavier 41, Tougaloo 33. Tougaloo fans, right now, Handy has his hand wrapped with a little ice. So hopefully he can get a little relief and be able to come out the second half and be able to see if he can be productive at any point. All right, we'll have more for you as we come back from a break. We'll be back after these words. A counterpart spend an average of 60% more on athletics. For the schools at the top of the Director's Cup rankings, the cost goes up to twice as much as an NAIA school. Regardless of their size, all schools are in competition for students. Student-athlete participation at NAIA schools has increased an average of 40% in the last five years. That's good for the student-athletes and provides vital support and financial stability to our member institutions. Moving from Division III to NEI has given our athletics department a boost in recruitment and it's been a definite step up in competition for our student-athletes. We know the NAIA isn't the right place for every school, but for those schools wanting to offer quality, competitive athletics without the high price tag, the NAIA is the right fit. Take a closer look. You won't be disappointed. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. The Citrus Sizzle is built on a strong foundation of onions, celery, and peppers layered with just the right amount of citrus. Citrus Sizzle is not too peppery and it's not too tart. It's a balanced symphony of lemon pepper flavors that are guaranteed to delight. This is Shay Bynes, founder of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur and executive producer of the film Trust Fall. I believe in the power of a story to transform lives. That is why I decided to make the film Trust Fall. It's a story that I believe will touch the hearts of entrepreneurs around the globe who truly desire to start and grow their businesses by partnering with the presence of an awesome and limitless God. At my core, I'm a passionate storyteller. So I was like a kid in a candy store making this film. Not only did I have the opportunity to be the producer and even assist in the fun of directing, but I was also the one who was able to tell my own testimony of the goodness of God in my life. 
My prayer is that this film ignites greater faith and stirs up a deeper hunger of experiencing more of God in your life and business. Because with God, there is always more. It's like a loot machine. Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. by Hilton, where the little things mean everything. When it comes to collegiate athletics associations, how do you know which is the best fit for your institution? It comes down to priorities. If your school wants to be nationally competitive at a reasonable price while driving enrollment and supporting the school's bottom line, the NAIA is the best association for you. How do NAIA schools do it? NAIA schools measure success not just by game scores, but by their financial bottom lines. Their NCAA counterparts spend an average of 60% more on athletics. For the schools at the top of the Director's Cup rankings, the cost goes up to twice as much as an NAIA school. Regardless of their size, all schools are in competition for students. Student athlete participation at NAIA schools has increased an average of 40% in the last five years. That's good for the student athletes and provides vital support and financial stability to our member institutions. Moving from Division III to NAIA has given our athletics department a boost in recruitment and it's been a definite step up in competition for our student athletes. We know the NAIA isn't the right place for every school. But for those schools wanting to offer quality, competitive athletics without the high price tag, the NAIA is the right fit. Take a closer look. You won't be disappointed. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. The Citrus Sizzle is built on a strong foundation of onions, celery, and peppers layered with just the right amount of citrus. Citrus Sizzle is not too peppery and it's not too tart. It's a balanced symphony of lemon pepper flavors that are guaranteed to delight. This is Shea Bynes, founder of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur and executive producer of the film Trust Fall. I believe in the power of a story to transform lives. That is why I decided to make the film Trust Fall. 
It's a story that I believe will touch the hearts of entrepreneurs around the globe who truly desire to start and grow their businesses by partnering with the presence of an awesome and limitless God. At my core, I'm a passionate storyteller, so I was like a kid in a candy store making this film. Not only did I have the opportunity to be the producer and even assist in the fun of directing, but I was also the one who was able to tell my own testimony of the goodness of God in my life. My prayer is that this film ignites greater faith and stirs up a deeper hunger of experiencing more of God in your life and business. Because with God, there is always more. Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard. Welcome back to the Adams Jenkins Center here on the campus of Edward Waters College. As we prepare to start the second half, our score, the number four seed Xavier Gold Rush with a 41 to 33 lead over the number one seed Tougaloo Bulldogs. Halftime stats. Bulldogs shooting 36% from the field, 9 of 25 from the field, while Xavier 13 of 25 at 52%. 4 of 10 from the three-point arc is Xavier, 3 of 9 for Tougaloo. Free throws, both teams shooting over 75%. Leading the way for Xavier, Jeff Dixon with 14 points, the only player in double figures, leading all scores. And for Tougaloo, they are led by DeMichael Stribling with 8. Three-second violation there to start the game as Xavier starts with an unforced turnover. For your fans at home, for you Tougaloo fans, Handy is wearing a hand brace. And it wasn't an Oscar Robinson ovation coming out, but he did walk out after the team and get a spot on the bench. And he's sitting like two players from the coach. Stribling missed that. There's a quick trap on Dixon. Able to get that ball over to Damani Flanagan. Stribling did start in place of Handy. St uh, Stanley Williams also started in place of Sean Atwater. And the Tavian Porter started in place of Sabron Carter. There's a shot put attempt by Mark. He misses, got his own rebound, gets another attempt. Tipped around, rebound by Scribbling. Scribbling. Hey, the Bulldogs are playing very tight defense as soon as the ball enters the three-point zone. Unable to finish that ball, that basket was Porter. Should also mention the Darius Woods. So essentially, four guys who came off the bench in the first half are on the floor starting the second half for Tougaloo, and only other starter that started this game is Corey Davis. So Coach Thomas Billups choosing to make some changes. That ball thrown away by Corey Davis there. Not sure, I think he wanted Porter to open up a little bit, and he didn't. Ends up being a turnover. Jeff Dixon with the ball in his hand. Over to Lloyd. Lloyd, jab step, steps back, goes around into the lane, and he's going to be fouled. Look, that, that's going to be on 25. Please the KV and Porter, his second. His second personal first team foul. Davis was looking like, I hope it's not me. Lloyd at the line so far today. Misses that first one. He, he was 2 of 2 coming into 
or two of two in the first half. Second attempt, no good as well. Stanley Williams up, up ahead. That's Woods. That's a kick ball as that ball ends up going off of Flanagan's foot. It looked like he was possibly trying to make a pass. And he's going to come have a seat, checking back into the ball game. Number 13, Darius Griffin. In the corner, turning that ball over is Williams. Never quite had a sound position established. I think he got bumped a little bit and it kind of threw him off. Ends up being a turnover. No scoring yet in this second half in the first two and a half minutes. And that's a travel. Nope. Correction. It's a moving screen. The Xavier foul on number 14, Damani Flanagan. Oh, Flanagan. Damani Flanagan, and he just picked up his fourth foul. Wow. wow. Usually you don't see guys start a ball game when they have th or start a half when they have three. So a little surprised that Alfred Williams, Xavier coach, went to Flanagan. And so now we'll have to be without Flanagan for some time now, I would imagine. You got Tonzel Handy in the game, being guarded. Down low by Lloyd. Three-pointer tip by Davis is good. Corey Davis. Corey Davis. That's his second three-pointer of the game. Cuts the deficit to five. And, of course, on the offensive end, we'll be watching Handy. It's on his left hand, that wrap. So we'll see how he plays with it. Lloyd into the corner. Mark pulls up, gets it deflected by Davis. Give credit to Corey Davis with the block there. Pull up three for Davis. No good. Rebound Lloyd. Dixon all the way up ahead to the other side to Anthony King. King gives it back to Dixon. Dixon plays with the screen. Decides to give it to Mark. That's King. Back to Dixon. Wide open three-pointer. Count it. Jeff Dixon. Increases the lead, 44-36. There's Handy, left hand, no problem. He goes up and bumped, and didn't show any ill effects with that uh, with that dribble, because he definitely dribbled left hand. He is holding it a little bit. This might be an issue of pain tolerance. You always you get a good tell here, possibly with his shooting here at the free throw line. Nice soft touch. Gets that one to fall. And you can see that it, well, I'm not sure you can see, but we can see from our angle definite discomfort. He's working through the pain. And nice soft touch on that free throw. He yeah, has shooters bounce on both of them. He has four in the ball game. Handy does. Little. 2-2-1 trap. There's Smith down low to uh, Lloyd. Just a little too low. Lloyd misses it, but he gets the follow. 46-38 lead for Xavier. Down low is Stribling. Stribling into the lane. Lost it off his foot. Stolen by King. Back comes the gold rush. Anthony King decides to hold up. Jeff Dixon with the ball. Is he going to work with the screen? He does. Going left. Ball deflected. That's Lloyd at the top. Thought about it. Decides to give it to Dixon. He goes down low to Kalen Smith. Smith, pull up jump shot. No good, but Dixon, oh, no, Lloyd tried to sneak in there. He took that ball away from Handy. Goes to the basket, and he gets the foul. Count the bucket, foul on Tonzel Handy, his second. Really, he was not really being aggressive to even draw the foul. He was trying to give a little ground. William Owen at the line for Xavier shooting one. Lloyd 
Lord is so strong, he kind of drew that by initiating the contact. Opportunity to finish the three-point play, and he does. Nine points for Long. 15 minutes, Xavier with a 49 to 38 lead. Down low to Handy, squares up, goes right, finishes. Nice finish there. That's where you want him. I think given the hand situation, put him on the left block, give him an opportunity to either go right or drop step baseline. There's Lloyd, skip pass over to Dixon. Mark. King gives it down low to Lloyd. Lloyd finds Dixon, three-point shot, no good off the rim. Rebound, Stanley Williams. Here he comes. Up ahead to Stribling, gives it back to Williams. He gives it back down. Scribbling on a short Oh, yeah, mismatch there. Anthony King is strong, but uh, let's see. You're talking 5'9 versus 6'6. Six, six. Yeah, King. 5'10, excuse me. Uh, the rough gave King a second look like I hit you with a tech. <laughs> Nice stroke by Stribling. He makes that. Stribling perfect from the free throw line. Has nine points in the ball game. He's five of five at the line. He's been the workhorse with Handy being out of the game. And definitely with the attention that Handy has gotten, right. he has been a he has done a great job coming off the bench in this ball game. And from the looks of his hand, the way it's wrapped. It's in between the thumb because you can tell his thumb is a little extended. Stribling comes off the floor and the Tavian Porter comes in. Little pressure. They got a trap there. Oh, and they're going to call a foul. They're going to call that on number 10, Sean Atwater, who checked in. I tell you, the officials have been very quick with the whistle, especially on the initial bump and contact. Not giving, not giving much to these teams. Donovan Armstrong with the ball being guarded tight. Gives it over to Dixon being guarded by Williams. There's the lob to Lloyd. Dixon to Lloyd with the lob. 51 to 42. Down low is Handy. Goes left. He's going to be fouled. Fouled by Galen Smith. The goal rush out for number 32, Galen Smith. That's his third, and they're going to say that's on the floor. Again, surprise. I would continue to be surprised with Handy lining up on the on that left, on the right block, where he would have to dribble left. I would uh, I would think you'd want to put him on that other block where he can dribble right and not have to use that left hand. Nice inbound play. Unable to finish. That was Porter, but Handy did get the rebound and did get fouled. He was quick off the floor, almost above the rim. And that's why Handy averages just under 13 rebounds a game. He is quick off the floor. First free throw is good. That foul was on Lloyd. That was his third. Checking in the ball game for Xavier, number five, Ed Carter. Checked into the ball game for Tugaloo, number 10, Sean Atwater. Second free throw attempt, no good. Mark comes up with the rebound. Rayshon Mark does. A 1 2 2 now by the Bulldogs. Into the middle of Smith. Nice deflection by Handy. Gets the steal and the turnover. Up the floor. Come the Bulldogs. Inside. Ball unable to be corralled. Williams tips it over to Atwater. Down low to Handy. There he is on that block. Going right. Jump stop. And the finish. There it is. What I tell you, Ron. I told you that's the block you want him on. I, I'm not sure you can stop him. A little slow to get up off the floor. I think anytime he hits the ground, and anytime he may have to put his hand on the ground, I'm sure there's a little. Hey, that's discomfort. why you have teammates. You know, they need to help him up. Tight 
Bonzel Handy at the line. He's three or four today. Knocks that one down. Second free throw attempt is good. You know, I think if Porter and Atwater are the primaries, then you can let you can let Handy come in and finish up behind them, which would be a good one-two punch. Rayshon Mart with the ball, gets the screen from Hall. There's Dixon, thought about it. Gives it back to Mart. He pulls the three. No good. Rebound cleaning by Davis. Up ahead come the Bulldogs. Atwater looking. Move it from one side. Nope, that ball is deflected by Dixon. And Xavier comes up with the ball. Active hands at Xavier defense. The Bulldogs have come up with the stop and the basket. We got a we're gonna have a good ball game. There's a little cut. There's Lloyd thought about it. A little flop there as he goes to spin move. Ball. Nope. Atwater comes up with the loose ball. He was surprised he was that open. Pushes it up. There's Williams, attacks the rim, and the finish got it in. This is what I'm talking about. A good stop and another basket. Good timeout. The Gold Rush call a timeout. The Bulldogs are moving. Their lead has been cut down to four. 12-10 remaining. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after these words. 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. for you at more than 325 hotels around the world. Book today at Doubletree.com. Doubletree by Hilton, where the little things mean everything. When it comes to collegiate athletics associations, how do you know which is the best fit for your institution? It comes down to priorities. If your school wants to be nationally competitive at a reasonable price while driving enrollment and supporting the school's bottom line, the NAIA is the best association for you. How do NAIA schools do it? NAIA schools measure success not just by game school. Back to live action here. 51-47 lead by Xavier. As the Bulldogs come out in a 1-2-2. Try to slow the tempo down. Lloyd gets it across. Mark. Ed Carter with the ball. Looks for a screen from Lloyd. Might be a mismatch down on the corner. On the block, rather. Pull up jump shot. That is good. Number 20, Mike Williams checked in for Xavier out of that timeout. 6'3", junior from Houston, Texas. At water had Lloyd. Defend him underneath the There's basket. There's Atwater for three off Atwater. the skip pass. Yes. Dixon able to tip it, and Mike Williams comes up with that. Not too many times you see a guy come off the bench and knock down his first shot. There's a lob just so high. I almost, I almost said too high, but I forgot. Mark has some nice athleticism. Out of the 55-47 lead for Xavier now. Handy at the elbow, turn going right, spin move, nice single up, up and under. Now, when his body hit Mike Williams, it was definitely not a lot of contact, but Williams kind of flew out of the way. I don't know if that's acting or if that just tells you. Yeah, the how Oscars strong were a couple of weeks ago. He okay. won't get that call. Okay. Here comes the screen. Nope, go away from it. Ed Carter, wow, inside, nice finish. On the slam, that's a nice slip screen by Lloyd. 57-49. Williams goes baseline, and there's a, a block called on Mike Williams. Xavier foul on 
Now, if Williams had taken now uh, that's the situation, Williams could have taken the charge. Right. Now, had he taken the charge, he might have got it because he was definitely out of the restricted area. Stanley Williams shooting two. Shooting two, Stanley Williams. He is a perfect two for two so far today in the contest. Overall, the Bulldogs are shooting 79% today, 19 of 24 from the free throw line. They have made more free throws than Xavier has shot. They have made 19, Xavier has shot 17. Misses the first one. So Tugalu, definitely they are getting to the free throw line. They will have no complaints after this one about that. Second free throw attempt is good. Good. Seven oh. point ball game. Did he step across the line? He did. I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure who Rayshon Mark is upset yeah, with. Mark should have gotten the ball once he got out of bounds. He wasn't supposed Williams, to inbound the ball. We just gave him the ball to inbounds. Ah, but he was out of bounds. I get you. Exactly. The Bulldogs will take it. Yes, they will. That's called an unforced error turnover. Andy, swing the ball around the corner, trying to get the ball over down low. Porter goes up with it, and there's Williams called for a foul. I think that was a bad call. Williams, he well, stayed vertical. He stayed vertical. He's frustrated, and the, yes, the official but was behind him. The official put his whistle back in his mouth as if he thought about calling the test off of something maybe that Williams might have said. Octavian Porter at the free throw line. Nice soft touch. That one goes in. Checking into the ball game for the Bulldogs. Number 10, Sean Atwater. Porter shooting his second free throw. Cuts it to five. Xavier lead is only five, 10, 12 to go. It looks like they're in a 2-2-1. Two, two, nope, they drop back. Mart almost turns it over, but gets it across. Trapped in the corner is Williams. And they're going to say he is fouled. Yes. Fouled by Porter. Porter kind of put his body on him to try to force him out of bounds on the little nudge. Into the ball game to Michael Stribling. He'll come in for Porter. And the official unhappy with something there at midcourt is going to call for the squeegee to towel the floor. It's 10-01 left, and we got a five-point game. Any of you young people out there looking for an opportunity to get involved with basketball, come out to Edward Waters College. You can be a ball boy and ball girl and help clean up the floor when a player hits the deck. It's a great way to come see a basketball game for free. Of course, please contact the Edward Waters Athletic Department. Yeah. Don't just show up. All of a sudden, we got a line of kids showing up tomorrow with Tao. Bulldog coach is <laughs> really working the ref over there. Thomas Billups. He's trying to let him know that Porter did not deserve... <laughs> and then Alfred That's Williams, wild. and then Alfred Williams on the other end for Xavier gets the same official's ear about something on his end. Jeff Dixon with the ball. Ed Carter being guarded. Pull up three pointer, no good. Rebound by Handy with one hand. Wow. It was a great I mean, rebound. Well, when you get up that high, I don't think anybody's going to get away. Strong ball. Unable to finish that with Stribling. It's going to go out of bounds off Andy. He should have just dunked that. He I was agree. that high. He was that high. He, he was that been. high. He should have dunked it. He tried to put it off the board. He either jumped. He either jumped 
a little bit too far. Should have just taken a dribble and finished it. But when you're that high, you got to go ahead and flush that home. Gets out of the corner is Williams. He finds Mark. He is bumped and won as he is bumped by Corey Davis. The gentleman number 15, Corey Davis, is third personal, 15 foot. Corey Davis picks up his third, checking into the ball game. Back the for Tougaloo, number 14, number 14 Derek Ashley, he'll check into the ball game, and Sean Atwater will come have a seat. Fifty-nine, fifty-two. Our score is Xavier Game leading. Nine, eighteen. Remaining in the contest. Paul Jawara checked into the ball game for Xavier. Free throw attempt, no good by Mart. Rebound by Handy. Up come the Bulldogs. Down seven. Moving it from side to side around the perimeter. Ah. That ball either slipped out of Williams' hand or he just gave a bad bounce pass to Davis. The ball actually goes between Davis' legs. Never had a chance at it at all. More substitutions. Jawara comes off the floor. Williams is back in for Xavier. Atwater comes in for Ashley for Tougaloo. Mart being guarded by Williams. Picks up a screen, almost a moving screen. Dribble handoff. Mike Williams with the ball, gives it over to Carter. He's quickly contested. Lost the ball, jump ball in the air. Who comes up with it? It's Porter. Gives it up to Williams, coming up the floor. Goes over to Davis, thought about it. Nope. Williams into the lane. Has it stripped by Mart. Up comes William Lloyd. Turned away by Davis. Down on the low block is Mart. Deflected by Handy. Loose ball. What's going on here? And they call a foul. Wow, they're going to call a foul on Stanley Williams. Foul, number one, Stanley Williams. It's third personal, sixth foul. They're going to say he intentionally kicked. And so, as more bodies hit the floor. Eight twenty remaining. Score still 59 to 57 for Xavier. As we said, Ron, if this game is in the 60s, it is probably at the pace that Xavier would want it to be. A game in the 80s, 90s would be at the pace that Tougaloo wants. And like I said, it was going to be far under that 80 90 mark because defensively, I think these teams were going to be compatible and not give up a lot of freebies. Inbound underneath for Xavier. Up top, Mike Williams. Hands off, gives it to Dixon. Back in the ball game, it's Flanagan. Going left into the lane, he has it stripped. Oh, he was stripped. By Davis, here goes Handy. He gets bumped by Rayshon Mart. Uh, they're going to call that on number 20, Mike Williams. Anthony King checks in for Flanagan. And at the, at the free throw line is Handy. Five of six thus far, 11 points and six rebounds. Knocks that one down. If I'm not mistaken, Ron, I think he's been perfect in this half with the with the wrap on his left hand. Knocks that one down too. At this point, I think Handy is the player that you don't want to foul. Right. At this point, I mean, 
over and ah, there's a little bump there by Atwater. He knows it. And Anthony King is fouled. And that is gonna send that's gonna send him to the line to shoot one and one. Atwater comes off his second. To Michael Stribling and Derek Ashley both check in for two blues. And now Paul Jawara checks in for Mike Williams for Xavier. King knocks the first one down. He's perfect so far today from the free throw line, three of three. Again, when you talk about, Ron, the free throw disparities in this ball game, usually the team that shoots more free throws is the team that's winning. That is not the case today. Tugaloo out shooting Xavier at the free throw line, made, making 24 compared to Xavier, who have only shot 19. Williams comes up with the ball. They're stribbling. Gives it back to him. They're going to take the ball. Nope. King gives it back to Williams. Xavier playing that zone. Three-point attempt, no good. Andy comes over to steal the ball. Oh, great play. Nice play. Williams to the rim. Hey, give that one to Tanzel Handy on hustle play. Able to poke that, able to steal that ball and poke it out so that his teammate can have an opportunity. Xavier with the ball, 10 seconds on the shot clock, in the hands of Jeff Dixon, goes left, avoids the strip, rebound by Corey Davis, here come the Bulldogs, Williams into the lane, lob to Stripley, three point game, cuts the deficit to three, 640 remaining, hey, the Bulldogs are up, Mike Williams just Whoa. takes the ball, takes the ball from Davis, yes. and they're going to say that Dixon, excuse me, tried to grab it. Oh, that would made a one-point game. He was going to be on his way. Well, it makes you wonder where that foul was committed if that is one of those, uh, what they call a breakaway fouls in another league maybe. A pair of substitutions for both teams are preparing to come in. Stanley Williams. Stanley Williams coming off the bench has added nine points, four rebounds, three assists. This is the first of two. But the speed at which Williams, the six-foot junior, fell from Belzani, Mississippi. Substitutions for both teams. Second free throw attempt is good. Darius Griffin comes in for Williams. Two point Xavier lead with 627. Tugaloo in a 1 2 2 press. Very loose until it comes across half court. There's the first trap on the sideline. There's another on the baseline. Andy, nope, that was scribbling. Jump ball. Oh, possession arrow goes to Tugaloo. Tugaloo. I think it's interesting, Ron, when you see the 1 2 2 that Tugaloo runs, it really is designed to draw the traps once the ball comes across the half side line. The distance between the top man and those first two guys is pretty significant. Usually in more traditional one two twos that you see, you see that, that first row of guys a little higher up. Two-point ball game. The number one seed, Tugaloo Bulldogs down two. Three-point shot in the corner was no good by Ashley. Back come the Golden Rush. Lloyd into the lane. 
did a great job of avoiding a charge. Mark baseline all the way back up top to Jeff Dixon. Coach calls for a little call and set up a play. Anthony King. Oh, that ball is lost by Lloyd. Not sure he really had it. Nice save by Ashley. Stribbling out on the perimeter. He thought about it. There's the guy you want to get a ball to. Nope, but there's Whoa. the guy who gets the rebound. Yes. Goes up with it. Oh! And they're going to say he's under. Wait a minute. Oh, he's going to say...
developers, but by their financial bottom lines. Their NCAA counterparts spend an average of 60% more on athletics. For the schools at the top of the Director's Cup rankings, the cost goes up to twice as much as an NAIA school. Regardless of their size, all schools are in competition for students. Student-athlete participation at NAIA schools has increased an average of 40% in the last five years. That's good for the student-athletes and provides vital support and financial stability to our member institutions. Moving from Division III to NAIA has given our athletics department a boost in recruitment and it's been a definite step up in competition for our student-athletes. We know the NAIA isn't the right place for every school, but for those schools wanting to offer quality, competitive athletics without the high price tag, the NAIA is the right fit. Take a closer look. You won't be disappointed. They're going to call Corey Davis with a foul from behind. He wasn't in a good position. I'm always intrigued and always watching to see, Ron, who, which team boxes out at this point in the ball game. Rayshon Mart at the free throw line for Xavier. And he misses the first one. He is and three of seven now. Mark with his second attempt. And no good. Corey Davis with the ball into the corner. Stanley Williams with the ball up top. That corner is Woods. Oh, was deflection almost taken away, stolen by Flanagan, but nope. Three-point attempt by Davis. Oh, Davis. Corey Davis with his third three-pointer of the day. Ties the ball game with three minutes to go. And he had a 6'11 guy with a hand in his face. Tough shot. Corey Davis, the senior Big from Vicksburg, shot. Mississippi. I tell you, he's going to have to carry this load. And Time Xavier out. is going to call a timeout. Oh they have 12 gosh. seconds remaining on the shot clock. It's going to be a full timeout. Full timeout by Xavier. We're going to take a break here. Tie ball game here from Edward Waters College. We'll be back right after these words. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Some belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a good Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. Sideline inbound for Xavier. William Lloyd 
Handoff, Jeff Dixon. Five seconds on the shot clock. Four, three, two. Dixon into the lane, and they're going to call a foul. Most likely on Detavian, excuse me, Porter. Foul number 25, Detavian Porter is fourth personal. His fourth. Xavier in the double bonus. Jeff Both Dixon teams now two. in the double bonus shooting two. He tripped over Porter's foot. But Porter went up and blocked it real nice. First free throw attempt of two by Dixon is good. Dixon leading all scorers with 19 points right now. Has not missed at the free throw line yet. He has 20. 21, excuse me. 69-67, 2.30 to play. Xavier Cup drops back into a 2-3 zone. Down low, Stribling. Jump shot's good. I've been waiting for them to put him back in the game. Tugaloo picks up man-to-man -man here. 69-69, every possession. I'm looking for Scribbling and Davis. Flanagan driving oh, left. Oh. He's contested. Yeah. Gets his own rebound. And they're gonna call King with that foul. I think he got a. I think that might be Davis. Foul number 15, Corey Davis is yeah, that's Davis. Five. Good call. He had an arm. Corey in. Davis. Yep. Yes. And that is his fifth, and that's a big oh, foul. Man. And they just and put him back in. Well, well, they had him out. Davis. Well, we have. Scribbling's gonna have to carry the load. Well, well underneath the box. The guy who's, he was three of five. Corey Davis was three of five. Obviously, other than uh, Davis. He had a big presence underneath playing defense. Free throw attempt is good by Damani Flanagan. A chance to push Xavier's lead from one to two here with the second attempt. No good. Rebound by Stribling. Under two minutes to play. Williams with the ball. Calls up Woods, Darius Woods. All the way back out to Williams. Looking, there's Handy into the lane. Finds Stribling, and that time he finishes. To Michael Stribling, a little high-low action, 71-70. The Bulldogs with the lead, their first lead of the half. Yes. 126 to play. Ooh. Jeff Dixon with some nice moves there, but doesn't go to the basket. Flanagan up top. Dixon again. 10 seconds, decides to go to Jawara. Nope. Dixon for three. Woo! Jeff Dixon. Yes. Knocks that down. He has 24 in the ball game. Stolen by Dixon off the skip pass by Wood. Under one minute to play. Xavier with a two-point lead, 73-71. to 71, And they call for a timeout. Man, anytime you do a cross-court pass, that goes against the fundamentals of basketball. Both of these teams are too quick for that to happen. 54.1 seconds. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after these words. When it comes to collegiate athletics associations, how do you know which is the best fit for your institution? It comes down to priorities. If your school wants to be nationally competitive, you won't be disappointed. Welcome back to our semifinal matchup here at Adams Jenkins Center. The number one seed, Tougaloo Bulldogs, had just grabbed the lead 71 to 70. 
before Jeff Dixon hit a three-pointer to give Xavier a 73-71 lead. And then he came back on the next possession and got a steal off a cross-court pass. That's Jeff Dixon with the ball. Comes off the screen. Yeah, they're going to call a foul there on number 10, Sean Atwater. And he tried to push through that screen, and he is holding his right shoulder. Yeah, I don't, I don't envy Atwater running into Lloyd the way he did. Lloyd is a pretty big dude. I'm telling you, he can play a tight end in the NFL. He's 6'5". And Ron, Ron Mitchell would know as a former college football player and professional scout. Hey, this kid can move. He has some nice shoulders, sweet touch. Missed that attempt. It's a three-point ball game. 74-71 Xavier. In the corner, Stribling thought about it. Nope. Plenty of time. You don't have to go for three. There's a pull-up three. Count it! Your second best three-point shooter of the day, Darius Griffin. He is being hugged by his counterparts. That was a big shot. That was a big shot. 74-77 yes. with 41 seconds left. 74-74, excuse me. And that is the third three-pointer of the day for Griffin. He has nine in the ball game. Well, Xavier, Xavier will have the ball, and it'll be interesting, Ron. Correction. Let's let's. Uh, there's 33 seconds left. So with a 30-second clock here, Xavier does have to get a shot off. That's correct. It'll be interesting to see. You can't be choosy about when you can score. Well, I would think you want to, given that it's a tie ball game. You want to work your play, and you want to get some points on the board. I would I would take this down, and I wouldn't look to score until about maybe the 10-second mark. But you got to score. So I don't want to give up score, on the two. But I, I, I don't want to give them that much time. Plenty of timeouts for both teams. Let's see. Tugaloo is going to come out and pick up. They're going to drop back to half yes. court here. I think they just wanted they're Xavier to make up, sure to pick up the they're, ball. They're picking up man. Ooh, there's Lloyd. There you go with that little sweep action. Lloyd at the top of the key. He's looking. What's he going to do with it? Pull up, step through. No, it's blocked. He comes up with it. Finds Flame again. Nope, there's Mike Williams with the ball. Hands off to Dixon. Nine seconds, seven seconds on the shot clock. Pull up, three-pointer, no good off the rim. Lloyd comes up with it. What's he going to do with it? Three seconds, Lloyd, he slips, loses his footing, turns it over, and we're going to overtime. That is what I was talking about. Everybody's trying to not shoot the ball, giving up opportunity when they need it to go back in. I'm hey, this is what we needed. This is tournament play. We got OT. We I'm got a little extra play. In time. I'm surprised we didn't see a timeout called when uh, when Lloyd slipped. That was the perfect opportunity. I think when that happened, it was had to be about maybe four seconds yeah. on the clock. Coaches get a little tied up, riled up in the uh, game. Yeah, I've been there. The Trust me. I understand. And they become spectators instead of stepping in and stopping the play. Well. Five more minutes. Calling a set play off a timeout is when coaches earn their name and their stripes. Well, I, what I'll give Xavier credit, that play that they ran where they get the ball to Lloyd at the top of the key and then their two guards split him. They've been running that all game. So that's a, that's a standard motion set that Xavier runs. Just give credit to Tugaloo for playing great defense. And here we come out, five minutes, five more minutes. Let's set these lineups for Xavier. 
Number three, Rayshon Mart. Number 11, Jeff Dixon. Number 20, Mike Williams. Number 14, Damani Flanagan. And jumping will be number 24, William Floyd. William Lloyd, excuse me. For Tougaloo. Jumping will be Tanjel Handy. Also on the floor, Stanley Williams, number one. Number 13, Darius Griffin, who hit that big three-pointer. Number 12, Anthony Parker checked in. And then there's number three, DeMichael Stribling. Now one of the big factors, foul. Look, we got a couple people with four fouls up on the board. Yep. Ball controlled significantly for Tugaloo, number one. Right there, Michael Stanley, he has four. And on the other side for Xavier, Kamani Flanagan, he has four. Of, of those guys who are on the floor. There's Stanley. Wow. Oh, big time finish right there to start this overtime hey, hey, by Tomzell Handy. That real nice. Uh, this is this hey. might be where you see the hey. conference player of the year yeah, show up. Suck it up. I, I bet you he has no pain in that hand right now. Oh, he oh, got a block. Got a, got a block. And that's going to be number five on Williams. That's a tough play. Foul number one, Stanley Williams, his fifth personal foul. And Jeff Dixon, who went to the ground, is going to go to the free throw line. But more importantly, that's going to be the end of a great game that has been played by Stanley Williams. For a young man that didn't start this ball game, he's made... I mean, he was a, a game pace changer when he came in. So that's going to be it for him. And now shooting two will be Jeff Dixon. So for everyone at home, Flanagan is on the court. He has four fouls. Jeff Dixon, 24 points in the ball game. He is 7-7 seven of seven at the free throw line today. Count that one. Eight of eight today. Second attempt. It's good. Checking into the ball game for Xavier. Anthony King, number 21. He comes in for number 20, Mike Williams. Tie ball game in overtime here. 76-76. Xavier in a 1-2-2 two, two now. There's a little bit of a trap. There's Handy looking. Goes all the way over to Atwater. Number 10. Atwater. Three-point shot. County. Oh, yeah, it's Griffin. Another big three. Yes. The Bulldogs are up three with 350 to play in the overtime. Jeff Dixon off the screen. Going to the rim, blocked by, blocked by Stribling. Whoa, he went down on that. This could be a big possession here if the Bulldogs can get a score. Atwater. Oh, and, and they're going to call a moving screen. Oh, wow, they're going to call, that's his fourth. That's tough. Not really sure whether Darius Griffin was going to shoot the ball, but he was definitely he was definitely open. So now he has four, and Fleming for Xavier has four. 325. Ed Carter checked in the ball game for Xavier. There's Flanagan. Guarded by Handy. Goes right to the basket. Reverse, and it's blocked by Stribling. Out of bounds. I don't really know if he needed to do the double reverse, clutch. If he would have just clutch. gone to the rim, right. he might have scored on that. Substitutions. Number 25, Dontavian Porter. Dontavian Porter, he has four now. And then also checked in for Fleming. That's Ed Carter in the corner. Pull up. Two-pointer, no good, but the rebound by Lloyd almost has it taken from him. He's being triple team. Anthony King thought about it, gives it up to Carter at the top of the key. 
20 seconds on the shot clock. They're going to go for something good here. Yes. Keep the floor spread. Off the screen, Carter goes. Going left, nothing, nothing. Thought about it, he stopped. And it's thrown away by Handy. Two on one. Goes right to the basket. Yes. They tried to foul him, but he was a little too strong. And he puts the Bulldogs up by five. 2.30 to play in overtime. Jeff Anthony King with the ball. Goes off the screen by Lloyd. Lloyd tries to post up down yes, on the block. Yes, the man on him. Goes up, gets three people, has it knocked out of his hands. Sean Outwater did a great job yes. of knocking the ball out of his hands. It ends up going off of Lloyd, and that ball is going to Tugalo. That water has four fouls, but he is not backing down. But he had the big man Lloyd trying to back him down. The Michael Stribling checks in for Porter. And it's a stationary inbound. Full court pressure by the Gold Rush. Finds Handy. Ball finds its way over to Atwater. He'll bring it up. Xavier guarding man to man. Let's see who gets the ball. There's Big shot. Griffin. Griffin. Sideline. Tau sweep. The officials doing a great job in this tournament to make sure that the floor is safe for these players. Doing a great job, this officiating crew. Seen it all day. Or all weekend, I should say. 158 to play. Sideline inbound. The Bulldogs with an 81-76 lead. Handy goes up. He has it on the baseline. Turns to face the basket. Gets a little bump from Lloyd and gives up the ball. Atwater has it again. Goes into lane. Oh! Handy just jumped out of the gym with a two-hand slam. The handyman was oh. a nice two slam there. There's Lloyd. Lost the ball. They're going to say he was fouled. Man. I think Handy had his elbows above the rim when he started coming down with that one. Wow, what a finish at the rim. 83 to 76 lead. Woo! 136 left in the overtime. At the line is William Lloyd shooting two. Knocks that down. Lloyd with 17. Five of eight today. Handy with 21 points in the ball game. Second one is in for Lloyd. He has 18. 83 to 78. Here is Griffin. And they're going to say Rayshon Mart with an immediate foul on Anthony Parker. That is Rayshon Mart's third. And look, that can't be a, it's not a bad foul because right. I know Mart is frustrated about the foul being called, but look, no time went off the clock. So if you're going to make a, if you're going to commit a foul, that's the foul that you actually want to make. Whoa. Parker knocks down the first free throw. Latavian Porter comes in for DeMichael Stribling. The Bulldogs bench locking arms. Eighty-four to seventy-eight lead. 
a six point lead the most that they have led in this half probably this ball game if I am forced to think back to the first half Jeff Dixon pull up three pointer no good Hardy with a rebound and he's fouled following it Mike Williams called for his fourth. You know, at this point, I'm not sure you. I'm not sure fouling is the smartest it's not. play. It's not. You almost want to. You you'd rather try play, play defense, it out for try for to force a turnover or a trial. Because now, let's see, seven point ball game goes to eight. Nice and, stroke by Handy. Handy is uh, seven of eight. Before that, he's eight of nine right now, with 22 in the ball game. Misses that one. 86 to 78. It's an eight-point ball game. A minute 20 to play. Dixon comes off the screen. There's Flame again for three. Got him. Got it. And Xavier calls a timeout. Gold Rush call a timeout. They trail by five with a minute and 13 to play in overtime. We'll be back right after these words. It's like a loot machine. Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. Back to live action here in the overtime. 113 to play. Tougaloo with an 86 to 81 lead over Xavier. A minute 13 to play inbound underneath by the Bulldogs. And Xavier will play a little man to man, a little full court pressure and try to jump trap it. See if they can try to force a turnover instead of fouling. Tougaloo will try to play a little keep away. Step through by Atwater being guarded by Donovan Armstrong. 10 seconds. Lost it a little bit. Atwater. Six, five seconds on the shot clock. Where is he going? He finds a oh. nice two-man game. Oh, I didn't finish it. that on the dunk. Was Stribling. Rebound by Armstrong. Xavier with an opportunity here. Oh, and it's on a charge. DeMichael Stribling takes the charge hey, on the drive by Jeff Dixon. Yeah, he got brushed. Yeah, that one was... Yeah. Oh, the coach just gave him a word or two about missing the dunk. But, hey, he just... He made up for it on the other end. Forward. He did. That was a little questionable, possibly, yes. from, from my view. Michael Stribling holding his elbow a little bit. I'm sure that one hurt, but after missing that dunk, you had to take that one. Yeah. 36.9 seconds left. An interesting possession there. Inbound underneath. Stolen away by King. Dixon. There's King. Three-point attempt. No good. Stribling comes up with it. Trying to hold on to the ball. He's fouled. 23.9 seconds going to the line. I mean, the Michael the Bulldogs have benches have something to clap about. They've been getting some good bounces. Hate to sound cliche, but hey, these Bulldogs they're up have five. They're up by five points. Yeah. The Bulldogs coach, he is definitely still coaching hard right about now. Yeah. To Michael Stribling at the free throw line. He's 6 of 6. 
seven of seven. Hey, Coach Billups is not taking it lightly. He's coaching. He's been coaching his whole second half. Six point ball game. Stribbling. Looking to stay perfect at the charity strike. Got it? Yes. Timeouts, Bulldogs. Timeout by the Bulldogs. 23.9 seconds. 88 to 81 lead. We're going to take a, well, it's a 30 second timeout, so we might as well just stay here on this 30 second timeout. As I look at some of this, the stats going on right now in this ball game, the high score in this ball game is Jeff Dixon for Xavier with 26 points. William Lloyd also has 18. Over on the other side, though, for Tugalu, they are led by Tanzel Handy with 22 points, followed up by DeMichael Stribling with 18. So let's see, they're gonna double up on Dixon. Flanagan has the ball, gotta get across, they need a quick bucket. Going to the bucket, finishes with a basket and a timeout called by Alfred Williams. 88 to 83 with 18.2 seconds. We'll take a break on that note. We'll be back right after these words. It's like a loot machine. Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. Back to live action in overtime. 88 to 83. Tougaloo Bulldogs battling back all second half, forcing overtime. And now with the lead and the opportunity to advance to the championship tomorrow. Quick foul. He's going to send the area's Griffin, Griffin to the line. The Bulldogs have shot 38 free throws. They are 30 of 38 from the free throw line in this ball game. Griffin, these are his first of the day. Of course, he is big shot Mr. Griffin here hitting the three in the corner that essentially would send this game that would tie it up late in the fourth quarter, or second half rather. Knocks the second one down, 90 to 83. Another timeout and... Fifteen point eight seconds remaining here, ninety to eighty-three, and I'm sure that in one huddle, the message about avoiding three-point shooting fouls or three-point shooters with fouls is very important right now. Don't give up any four-point plays. I'm sure that had to be the message. Stay close, but don't touch. While on the other side, you obviously have to try to draw up a quick play and get a three-point attempt. Xavier has two timeouts remaining. Tougaloo has one. Both teams back on the floor now. Xavier inbounding. Ed Carter got to get across quickly. 
Going to the bucket. Nope. Pull up jump shot. Count it. Good. Quick timeout. Timeout. 8.7 seconds left. That water shaking his head. He did all he could do. You don't want to commit a foul. You let a little body contact get in on it. That's about as You well. don't want to give up a three-point play. Just go ahead and let him shoot the two. Well, I, I think you we got a, I think you could have pulled up and shot the three-point, the three-pointer in that situation. But like I said, you're in a tough spot here, and it's going to take somebody making a mental mistake here. But we have seen, what have we seen? We have seen there's 8.9 seconds left. We've seen plenty of things happen with 8.9 seconds in the game of basketball, have we not? Yes, we have. Who will play the Reggie Miller role? Hey, Coach Phillips is over there coaching, so none of that happens. He is not playing the radio right about now. The possession arrow does go to Xavier, so that's another thing to remember here. If there is a jump ball, Xavier does get the ball, so if they're able to somehow get their hands on it. Handy's giving scribblings couple of see, like, instructions of how like, you want to play this. Well, six, I was going to say six guys came off out of the huddle for Xavier. I don't think that'll help right now, really. <laughs> well, you mean having six guys? Six, six guys, guys will definitely help. Good. Might get a jump ball. Here we go. Here's the inbound play. Nearly oh. stolen, and there's a quick foul. And that's that going to be Flanagan. Him. Yes, it Flanagan. will. That'll be number five on Damani Flanagan. Yes. Un unfortunately, it seems probably the best free throw shooter in the ball game today to the line. The Michael Stribling. He is eight of eight. Michael Stribling at the line. Two, two, two. It happened in Florida, too. Seven point eight seconds left. Oh, First attempt is good. Still a two-possession ball game as the lead is six. This free throw right here would essentially make it a seven-point ball game. Stribling counts. 20 points for DeMichael Stribling. There's the inbound to Lloyd. Gives it up to Dixon. Dixon pulls up three-pointer, top of the key. No good, and that's going to do it. Tomzell Handy and comes Andy up with comes it. Down. What an amazing yeah. comeback. Yes. What an amazing comeback. Yeah. Talk about overcoming adversity. Down 41 to 33 at half. Your conference player of the year and it goes down. Bleak. Right. You, he was looking bleak. Walking off the court, he was looking really defeated. The number one seed, they basically flipped the score, outscoring Xavier 18 to 11 in overtime. Our final score, the Tougaloo Bulldogs, 92. Xavier Gold Rush in their season. And what a great effort, great performance by Xavier. Tomorrow we have a championship game between the Bulldogs and the Edward Water College Tigers right here in here. Looks like we're going to have a post game. Want to make sure we're, we're good? All right, joining me first off, congratulations, Coach Phillips. All right, nice job on the win. Uh, let's start with uh, Handy and the injury. What at halftime was the message to your team down 41-33 and dealing with that injury and possibly the uncertainty of whether he'd be able to come back? Well, 
he got a fracking, they say he had a fracking hand. Thong. Okay. So I taped it up and he told me he ready to go. When he say he ready to go, I let him go. But you know, with my bench, we can play twelve or thirteen deep. Yes. We rotate in our fence defense, so uh you know, I wasn't worried the first half. I knew we had a second half where we could come back and you know and play our type of ball. And, I, and speaking of your bench, you went, you started that second half with four guys that didn't start the right. game. Uh, significant contributions. Talk about uh, the Michael Stribling, Stanley Williams. Those two guys seem to really spark what your team was able to get done in the second half. Yeah, but well Mike, so athletic. He can do almost everything. He can shoot the threes. He can, and Stan just so quick, he can get to the basket and penetrate. Uh, he leading the conference right now in assists. Right, right. I saw that. And and so your team, you're one game away from accomplishing that goal. What's the message tonight? As you think about where your team has gone this entire year, what's the message and thought for tonight heading into the Mall's championship? Well, you know what? At this time and at this point, we just gotta play hard and tough, hard and smart. Hey, hey, hey. if. Whoever here to play the championship, hey, they didn't get here easy. Yep. So right. you just got to come to play. All right. Well, Coach, you guys get some rest, heal up, hydrate up, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Should be a great championship should game. Should be. Should be. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Appreciate it. All right. That was Coach Thomas Billups. And that's going to do it as the two Blue Bulldogs advance to the championship game against Edward Waters College. Should be a game worth watching. That game time, I believe, is preceding actually the first game by uh, women's championship tomorrow, 2 o'clock, between Edward Waters College and Dillard. And then at 4 15, we've got the men's championship between the Tougaloo Bulldogs and Edward Waters College Tigers. So, should be a great day here. You can, of course, catch all the action here, mybcsn.net slash GCAC. Make sure to scroll down so you can see the video. Want to thank all the guys who have been here producing and running the camera for games today. We we're down to two tomorrow. Championship Sunday is coming. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a good night. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Championship Sunday for the Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. Basketball, men's championships, and women's championships.